And the 5G Innovation Center called the 5G IC at the University of Surrey is now the largest UK-based academic research center in Europe that's dedicated to the development of next generation mobile and wireless communications. TI now is pleased to welcome and speak with Professor Rahim Tafazoli. He's the director of the 5G IC and also the Institute of Communication Systems. And Professor, welcome to the program. Thank you, my pleasure. Well, thanks for being with us. Uh, obviously a time difference between uh, where you are in the UK and here in Washington. So we appreciate you sticking around the office to talk with us. Um, I want to speak with you uh, sort of right out of the gate about the 5G IC and how it's carrying out its work within the framework of really seven key work areas. Why choose those particular areas of study? Our research approach is on an end-to-end -end 5G system. And it consists of wired as well as wireless part of the whole system, including the user terminal. And the three important aspects of 5G makes the approach we have adopted essential in order, in order to address all the requirements of the 5G. One of the important requirements is the latency. We cannot just achieve the delay and guaranteed latency only on the radio side or on the wired side, but it has to be end to end, even to the application layer protocols. Another aspect is flexibility flexibility for support of different services from narrowband services all the way to broadband services with different mobility aspect. And the third important element is the 5G IC membership, which consists of all the players in the ecosystem of the 5G. And each of our partners, different partners have different interests and different business model and different aspects of the system. So it is important to mention that all the seven areas that we have, it covers uh, all that area, wired as well as wireless, as well as the application layer. But there is, on, there is one important area within the seven areas, and that is whatever we do, the technology that we develop, we need to implemented and tested for the proof of concept in a real environment. And that is the proof of concept and testbed work area that uh, is part of our research program. Rahim, would you say that the 5G IC's vision for 5G is also aligned with maybe the EU's vision for 5G as well? Yes, the, the vision that we developed with our industrial partners in 2012 is uh, still valid and is still relevant and uh, is was considered to be extremely radical because it was different from the vision and requirements that 4G was uh, had compared to 3G and 3G had compared with 2G. The vision was around what is the market requirement? What do the society need from 2020 for the next 20 years after that? And that is the basis of our vision. And now I can say that it's very much in line with the EU vision, as well as the most of the global vision, uh, working on research and innovating on 5G technologies. Rahim, I'm going to ask you about the challenges that you're facing uh, currently as you really bring uh, the academic expertise and, and join that with key industry partners in that shared vision that you talk about, uh, that to further 5G innovation. What are some of those challenges? Well, we are quite fortunate. When we started establishing the uh, 5G Innovation Center, our industrial partners, uh, they asked us and they advised us not to do incremental research. And more specifically, they said, we should not start the research with 4G. And they gave us a clean slate approach. They said, what is the art of possibilities if we want to achieve the, rec the challenging requirements that we set for ourselves in terms of the technology, what is the state of art and what is the art of possibility it can be done uh, on the radio side as well as on the network side. So that is ideal situation for academic institute. Uh, 
on the other hand when we you when you work with industry you need to just not only do simulation computer simulation or mathematical analysis you need to prove the concepts prove the concept by prototyping the solutions and demonstrating the solutions in a real life environment and that is uh, more believing and more convincing and this is one of the areas that we need to adapt very quickly to the methodology that we add, we carry out our research to implement and test every technology and every solution we have. Raheem, are you able to talk about a couple success stories between, again, for these 5G partnerships between academia and industry? Well, we work very closely with industry. It is not the case uh, that we do a research and every six months or every one year we get together with our industrial partners and present the results to them. Industry members and they act like mentors to our PhD students as well as to our academic colleagues and they work on a weekly basis or monthly basis through different media and different means. It could be face-to-face -face meetings uh, as well. So we do work very closely and hand in hand sort of approach. And uh, we have had many success stories. We jointly developed the f and demonstrated the first 4K ultra high definition video on the mobile networks in 2015. And we also demonstrated one of the important aspects of 5G that is huge number of connectivity or mass connectivity some people refer to. And we demonstrated through a novel and innovative technique is called SCMA or sparse code multiple access that we can achieve more connectivity than 4G system can do. As a matter of fact, in 2015, we showed three times more connectivity than 4G can uh, achieve. We also uh, demonstrated the technology on the fixed side of the network, which is software-defined networking and network function virtualization and network slicing in order to support uh, a diversity of services while we can uh, guarantee quality of service from Internet of Things all the way to mobile broadband communication in, in the same networks. In 2016, in September 2016, we demonstrated the SDN based uh, mobile NFB network function virtualization and we demonstrated dynamic slicing of the network uh, in our lab. In addition to all this, we have also demonstrated uh, many other technologies in terms of like massive MIMO technologies for high capacity requirements aspect of the 5G. We have uh, patented more than 20 patents, many publications in this area. And uh, many people graduated, got the PhD and they, uh, their qualifications. Uh, and, uh, and also the testbed is gradually becoming fully 5G ready for uh, eventual uh, test, uh, test and demonstration that we want to do in first quarter 2018. Actually, I want to ask you about, so, so the 5G IC uh, is a state-of-the-art testbed. How are you able to validate, and I know you touched on this a little bit before, but how are you able to validate standards and really maybe vendor interoperability testing with that? Well, we have, our testbed is very open at the different aspects of the network, on the radio side, as well as on the network protocol side. To a large extent, we can try different technologies, different protocols on our testbed. And it is a large scale in order to generate huge amount of traffic in the network. It is like a mini mobile network on our campus with a fully functional uh, capability. 
So we can demonstrate radio technologies, we can demonstrate new antenna technologies, we can demonstrate network protocol technologies, uh, and as we have done uh, at 3.5 gigahertz, 700 megahertz, 26 gigahertz, software-defined networking, network function virtualization, as well as new signaling architecture in uh, 5G networks. In terms of interoperability of different technology, as the equipments are being developed by industry, they can bring it in and test them from one vendor to another vendor, but it hasn't happened so far. Rahim, I want to ask you about the, the international reach of 5G IC. Um, can you talk about that reach as far as um, areas maybe like mobile communications, IoT, satellite communications, broadcasting, or even connected cars? Yes. Uh, we have uh, our testbed already, which is based in, on our uh, university campus, is already connected to Germany and to Italy, and we are doing pan-European test and innovation on software-defined networking and network function virtualization, as well as on network security. And we are working with uh, companies like Telecom Italy and uh, in Italy and Ericsson's and uh, Technical University of Berlin. And uh, so we are conducting that sort of experiments. And it, the testbed is not only limited to our campus or in UK. And in UK is co connected to a number of other uh, companies, uh, testbed like Vodafone, uh, like Fujitsu, Cloud Computing, uh, as well as British Telecom uh, testbed, we do fix mobile convergence. Well, Rahim, it was great to have you on the program. Uh, we'd love to actually come out to your area of the world and check out the Innovation Center at some point. So hopefully we can arrange for that. You have an open invitation from me. Rahim, thanks again. And uh, to our viewers, uh, TIA has released its operator white paper and survey uh, very recently, and it's on our corporate website. That's tiaonline.org. Uh, you're welcome to go to that homepage, and you can access the white paper and survey there. Thanks for watching. So long.